tell you folks coming out to our practice. Uh, I can see 30 more centuries of practice before we have to put this on. I guess we'll just have to go ahead with it though. On behalf of the February families, I'd like to welcome you to We Do All This at Home Too, sometimes. One of the fun things that uh, I have become aware of in putting this program together is that nearly all of the numbers that you'll see tonight, uh, that's just what they are. They are numbers that were performed in the home for the father's birthday or some other family gathering. Oscar, Jessup, will you come and hold the place? Thank you. 
have a cupboard right here. I'm sure it would be asking too much for four shelves and a mirror. Well, someday we'll be prosperous and have the cupboard of our dream with shelves and curtains. How neat that would seem. Should I or shouldn't I? I'll call Pete. He can make anything. His saw, his nails, and his hammer he'll bring. This carpenter will do it. I'm sure he knows how. It will cost us some turkeys, a goat or a cow. Hi, Pete. It's Tom. Would you come over soon? To measure for cabinets in the morning? Okay, then noon. Why, Pete, you're a friend to come to my aid. Just make me a cupboard. I'll make sure you get paid. Thank <laughs> you. 
I was sure they would fit. I measured with care. It's okay. Just push a little harder. If I really dare. You dear ladies, close your eyes, for I have for you a big surprise. Oh, dear husband, you're so clever and sweet to buy these new cupboards. They're sure hard to beat. <laughs> we'll treat them so gentle, this work divine. You've dressed up our kitchen with these cupboards so fine. In order to keep them so new and so nice, just do feather dusting in a week, once or twice. Here, my friend Pete, you've done a great work. Please accept for your pay this big plump turd. Later, the same game is played, of a man pleasing his wife in this usual way. But this time, instead of cupboards, they are cabinets so fine. He's labored and planned to meet a deadline.
Cabinet shop, Rodriguez speaking. <laughs> May I help you? You say you need cabinets. Today? Right now? I can't make a promise. I hardly see how. Come into our office. We'll go over it today. We have plans, styles, and colors. We'll hear what you say. You can't make it till six? Sure, I'll stay late. No, it's really no trouble. I'm sure I can wait. This is one of those clients I can already detect. It'll be interesting to meet them and gain their respect. I'm, I'm glad you're not closed. I hurried real fast. I thought for months about cabinets. Now I'm ready at last. Will you draw my kitchen? At last I have a print. The sketch of this hutch gives the right kind of hint. The style of the door is so hard to decide. There's so much to choose from. What will give my home pride? This glass sash door, I'm sure will be best. Consider this style while you look at the rest. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be right. It's the one of my choice. I hope my family will like it, or I'll hear their combined voice. I'll start entering this in the computer. What color will it be? We have decided on mahogany. Well, so long for now. I'll come in the morning at 9 to see my new kitchen. Oh, how it will shine. Rodriguez speaking. Miss Jones, is that you? Come see your plans. The computer's all through. Wow, I'm glad you're still here. The traffic was bad. Sure, I'll show you your cabinets. I know you'll be glad. They are fine, except this, and that, and this over here. Bring this to the front, and this to the rear. Why, sure, Miss Jones, no problem at all. I'll redo it tomorrow, and then you can call. Wow. Hello again. Your plans are redone. Making this set of cabinets will be so much fun. Yes, I think they'll do. You see, since you picked the top of our line, the price will be this. Sure, but that will be fine. How soon can you begin? By next week, can you start? Well, you'll have to wait six weeks. My goodness, have a heart. I'll call the shop foreman to see how soon he'll begin. Hi, a rush job I have. Can you soon work it in? Not for six months? She didn't grin. Six months? What a deal! I can't wait! No way! Uh, if Andersons were postponed, how would that make them feel? Well, we'll give it a try and hope for the best. Keeping customers happy is our daily test. Three weeks will start, and that's pretty quick. Getting your job started then will be quite a trick. Good day, ma'am. We'll work day and night. 
in hopes that completion will soon be in sight. Are you sure that you made the day quite clear for the day of arrival for our cabinets, dear? We mustn't be anxious. The day's just begun. The crew's probably out now. I know they'll soon come. I'm here at your service. Is everything set to start our installing? Installing our tools, we will get.
They are such lovely cabinets, but a tiny shade light. Perhaps a refinished job would make them just right. Oh, Sophronia, my dear. See, it was only the sun. Now the curtains are closed. They rate number one. Do I see a tiny speck way up high? Oh, Sophronia, dear, look here. The speck was in your eye. Well, the cabinet's complete. It really looks neat, if I say so myself. It's a beautiful shelf. So, now it's completed to your satisfaction, please give this small bill attention. <laughs> oh yes, my fine man. You'll be paid. I won't fail. For first thing in the morning, I'll make sure your check's in the mail.
things that parents say to their children. It's been sped up a little bit so the child doesn't have any time to interrupt or anything. Here it goes. You better change your tune pretty quick. I mean it. Is that understood? Don't shake your head at me. I can't hear your head rattle and don't mumble. You act as if the world owes you a living. You got a chip on your shoulders. You're not going anywhere looking like that. You're crazy if you think you are. If you think you are, just try me. I don't know what's wrong with you. I've never seen a kid like you. Other kids don't act like that. I wasn't like that. What kind of example do you think you are for your little brothers and sisters? You're cruising for a bruise, and I'm your father as long as you live in my house. You'll do as I say do. Quit smacking in my ear. Are you blind? Watch what you're doing. You walk around here like you're in a daze. Something better change and change fast. You're driving your mother to an early grave. This is a family vacation, and you're going to have fun whether you like it or not. Take some responsibility. Pull your own weight. Don't expect others to pick up after you, and don't ask me for money. What, do you think I'm made out of money? Do you think I have a tree that grows money? You better wake up, and I don't mean maybe. Do you act like this when you're away from us? We've given you everything we possibly could. Food on the table roof over your head, things we never had when we were your age. You treat us like we don't exist. That's no excuse. If he jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff too? You're grounded. I'm not going to put up with that for one more minute. You're crazy if you think I am. If you think I am, just try me. Don't look at me that way. Look at me when I talk to you. Don't make me say this again. Cool. 
I'd like to have a serious talk with you. I think it's about time that you found yourself a wife. What he means is, we think it's about time you found yourself a wife. Yes, yes. <laughs> now you are my son and you are my heir and soon you will rule my kingdom. So your mother and I have decided it's time for you to give up your freedom. Now to further this end, I decided to send the most royal invitation to the dancers so fair in the land everywhere to a glorious convocation. What he means is to give a ball and invite pretty girls, that's all. Now should you perchance at this most festive dance find a dancer with whom you're smitten, it would suit my royal plan to discover young man that the love bug at last has bitten. What he means is to call a ball for a miss you can kiss as a wife for your life. Why that is the meaning of this? So shall it be. Call my messengers. Spread the word. It will be heard throughout the land. A royal ball for one and all. Positively grand. <laughs> no time was lost before the king's messenger arrived at the house where Cinderella lived. Hear ye, hear ye. I let it be known that the king and queen wish to invite all the young ladies of this household to a ball to be held at the palace, etc., etc., etc. Did you hear that, Mother? What will I wear? Perhaps my blue brocade. If you can squeeze into it. I know I'll be a vision in my new red dress. It suits my lovely rosy skin. If it's your skin you wish to suit, sister, perhaps your green gown would be better. Girls, girls, be your sweet selves now, for we have much planning to do. You know that the prince is looking for a wife, and, well, we must be at our best. A ball at the palace. Oh, how I say, Darilla, you. A bundle of rags and cinders at the palace. <laughs> oh, my. I've split my gown for laughing so. You better get busy and sew it up instead of sitting here and dreaming. Of course, Cinderella, you know that this ball is only for the finest young ladies in the band. But come now, be healthy. You can start by washing and ironing our petticoats. You do iron very well, Cinderella. For the next few days, there was nothing but talk of what to wear to the grand ball. And lots of work for Cinderella. Perhaps the ruby red velvet. Cinderella, what do you think? To tell you the truth, dear sister, you look much better in pink. But the blue with the bows and the tall petticoats somehow makes me slimmer. If I may suggest you stick to the pink and forget about eating your dinner. Now don't forget Cinderella. You 
just a cinder girl. But as long as you're here, I may as well ask, tell me, what do you think of this curl? Shall I wear it in front on the side or on top or in back of my purple feather? I must be honest and answer you. Forget the curl altogether. What glove, what band will please that man, Cinderella? What's your opinion? It's not the clothes that will charm the prince, but the girl inside will win him. Tell us, Cinderella, since when do you know what will please the prince? Enough of this talk, Cinderella. Hurry, get me my pink. You know that we certainly never could possibly ever care what you would think. Now fix my hair and don't you dare make use of that ugly curl. Whoever thought to find ladies like we need the help of a sister girl. Girls, girls, come now. We must be off to the palace. One well, we cannot be late for a royal ball. Goodbye, Cinderella. Goodbye. 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 Have a good time. that everyone had gone, Cinderella sat down in her seat by the fire and cried. Oh, how I wish. Oh, how I wish. What is it you wish, Cinderella? You can tell me. But who are you? I have never seen such a beautiful lady before. I am your fairy godmother, Cinderella, and I am here to tell you that you shall have your wish. But my wish is to go to the ball. And you shall go. But you must help me. First, go up to the garden and get me the largest pumpkin you can find. Yes, yes. Now, go and look in the mouse trap and see if there are any mice in it. And we must also have one sleek and handsome rat. Will these do? Splendid. Now, again in the garden, look behind the watering can and you will find six lizards. Bring them to me. Cinderella had hardly returned with the lizards when... Oh, Godmother, you've turned the pumpkin into the most beautiful golden coach I have ever seen. Yes, Cinderella, and you will ride it to the palace ball. But now we must have horses to pull it. You've turned the mice into six white horses. And that handsome rat you brought me shall make a splendid coachman. And I must not forget about our six footmen. Where are those wizards?
some time. What is the matter, my son? Everyone is dancing but you. And it is for you that we planned this ball. I know, I know, but I find these young ladies so dull and foolish. Suddenly, a hush fell over the room. The music stopped, and everyone turned. For a young lady of great beauty and grace had entered the room. Who is she? I do not know, sire, for I have never seen her before. Oh, I must meet her at once. May I have this dance? Oh, yes, your highness. For the rest of the evening, it was clear to everyone that the prince had found the girl of his dreams, for he danced with no one but Cinderella. The prince didn't have anything to say when he danced with me. And now look at him. That's because you never stopped talking long enough to let him get a word in. He spoke to me. He told me he was tired and wanted to rest. And now look at him. He hasn't stopped dancing with that girl. I wonder who she is. She is quite pretty. Cinderella had slipped away through the crowd. Oh, what have I done? I promised my fairy godmother. Cinderella was barely down the palace steps when she found herself in rags. Gone with a gown and jewels. Gone with a coach and footman. Gone. Gone. All that remained was one glass slipper on her foot. Quickly, she put the slipper into her apron pocket. The prince rushed out after her. Guards! Guards! Which way did she go? My lovely princess! I must follow her! Tell me! Tell me! We have seen no lovely princess, sir. Have you seen nothing? Just a peasant girl in rags. But what is this? A glass slipper. Her slipper. It must have fallen from her foot. The only trace I have of my fair princess. sisters and their mother arrived home from the ball to be greeted by a very tired Cinderella. <sighs> How was the ball? You'll never guess what happened. A most beautiful princess appeared whom no one had ever seen. She was quite perfect in every way and the prince danced with her all night long until she rushed away at midnight. And nobody knows her name. The poor prince seems so sad. Cinderella took the glass 
slipper from her apron pocket and held it in her hand. and lost her in one evening. It's too sad. All I have left is her precious slipper. I know. I shall have the land searched until I find the dear foot that fits this slipper. And when I find the one that fits, I know I shall have found my princess. Try the slipper on everybody. 
And I can't see why she shouldn't have a chance. Thank you, kind sir. Cinderella slipped her foot into the tiny glass slipper as though it had been made for her. For in truth, it had. My lady, you must be the princess the prince has been seeking. The princess? The princess? The princess. As Cinderella removed the other glass slipper from her apron and placed it on her bare foot, her stepmother and stepsisters made a deep bow before her. Please do not bow. I am the same girl I was yesterday, and I will be the same tomorrow. I'm so happy, so happy, so happy. It's true. I want everybody to be so happy, too. But you will be married to the prince, and we have been so shall come and visit me at the palace. I shall wear my blue brocade. If you can squeeze into it. Sisters, sisters, have you learned nothing? If you do not sweeten your dispositions, how will the prince and I ever find you a husband? Husbands? Oh, Cinderella! Cinderella! and he was waiting at the palace steps for Cinderella to arrive. I'm so lucky, so lucky, so lucky, it's you for I lost and found you. Now I'm so happy too. We're so happy, so happy, so happy, it's true. discovered in working with this program this year is that I have a family band. I didn't know that before, but uh, I found out another thing and that is that when I started trying to lead them, then they all started coming to band. And I like to have them stand up here. On trombones, we have Morgan, Jefferson, and Jody. On saxophone, we have Truman and Trina. On clarinet, we have Ada. Warren, Nephi, and Jerome on the trumpet.
always loam and tech. Thank you. 